I would prefer to work without grooming arms, period, but I haven't found too many dogs that are willing to stand there with their heads up, so. There are a few I can do. Like Lucy. I figured out how to do Lucy. He put a donut on the table in front of her. No. And Lucy points the donut like the best pointer you've ever seen. <laughs> and she'll stand there frozen for an hour if she needs to. <laughs> now you want to clean out behind this ear and come down this neck smoothly. Because usually there's way too much hair here, mm -hmm. and they look like they don't have any neck. You've stood here before with things on your... I love this comb for trimming, it's great. I like mm -hmm. to use a coarse tooth to flip the hair out. And mm -hmm works great. Thank you. I've had lots of compliments on that comb. Yeah, it's a good weight too. Not too heavy, not mm -hmm. too light. The pins won't bend on that either. That's, That's actually nice. really hard steel. Now if they don't fall out? That won't, yeah. I used to have to run around with some of them with my super glue <laughs> scrounging my things off the floor and stand. Wow, that grabs the hair really nice. Oh, yeah. When I demo poodles in using that comb, people just love that. I was at a show and somebody, I was showing her how to work on her poodle, and um, and she says, oh, I have a comb like that. I said, really? <laughs> so yeah. she tried her comb, and then she tried this one, and she went and bought one. Secrets <laughs> in the points on the teeth. Yeah, yes. Blunt teeth just don't go into a coat. You right. have to have very pointed teeth. Right. And people don't understand that. They, oh, it might hurt the dog. No. Try and get through this coat. Yeah. Just try it. On my hair, yeah, you could do it. But on this one, uh-uh. You need those points to get in there. Now, this is the shawl. And it's, Newfoundlands aren't supposed to have shawls, but they right. all do. And what it is, is it's longer, it's straighter, and it's flatter than the rest of the back. So you have long, short, long. So we have to make everything the same length so that you don't have a bad looking top line with a dog that has a good looking top line. So I usually shorten this down just a little bit. And it's very tricky to do to make it lay right. So you've got to be very careful. You do a little at a time, then comb through it and see how it works. See, I've got a little line there, right. so I have to take that out. Plus, the judge has to flip that. So. Oh yeah, the judge has to flip it. Well, this will always flip back. Mm -hmm. This may not. And then the last little bit is you just lay down there flat and wow, that's take it out like that. That's smooth as a duck's butt. Oh, well, I hope so. <laughs> This is where those texture crystals are going to come yep. into play, too. Right in here, because you can't make flat hair and wavy hair look the same. Right. Well, the object of the game is to make a dog look very natural. You mm -hmm. don't make them look foofy or puffy or something they aren't. And a good judge will always have their hands on the dog. They can find absolutely everything. They should be able to find everything. So you really aren't lying to them. But I think by grooming, you're actually respecting them. Because who wants to put their hands in a filthy, dirty dog? Not me. This is, by the way, much warmer than mink. Oh, I bet. Oh, you have no idea how warm this is. That's why I think every Newfoundland person should have to wear a coat knit out of Newfie wool for five minutes. <laughs> My friend in Wisconsin actually has one. Very thin really? little sweater knit. She got it in Copenhagen. It's knit out of brown Newfoundland fur. Another very important thing on grooming is to have a straight spine. And 
most people don't realize that, and they turn their heads left and right, and you're chopping away, and then you wonder where that hole came from. Yeah. God, she is just gorgeous. Okay. I can't believe this texture. Yeah, isn't this incredible? God, so that, and it's staying. Yeah. Nothing's curling up. Yeah. Nice. I think we got a hit with this shampoo. I think we got a hit with this shampoo, too. <laughs> What's that? He better. Yeah, I, I'm going <laughs> to give you guys some out of that. Yeah, but you know, we use it by the gallon. Yeah. So have more. <laughs> That's I mean, you all have... I have. Oh, is that right? But yeah. actually, we didn't use very much. Yeah, you're not going to use very much of this. Well, I have to know how to get it. If I don't know, my clients uh, don't know. I'm a deep Actually, doo -doo. Ashley Craig will be the main distributor. Mm. Um, I'll get you set up with Ruthie there. Okay, who's Ashley Craig? Ashley Craig is the... Uh, Manufacturer for Greyhound. Oh, okay. Greyhound. Stay. Yeah, they're the ones that make all the combs and brushes. Stay. They're, they're from England, but they actually are in the United States also. I know that this is an area where people mess up the ears really bad. Ears are tough. Yeah. So what are you using for a, a line to try to get that shape? Okay, what I do is I edge the ear. Okay. That's the first thing I do. And... Okay, I'll try and explain it. The way it was explained to me was munch around on it until it looks like an ear. Right? That okay. wasn't a very good explanation, but that's the best I've heard. Right. <laughs> so what I do is I hold the ear out and I edge it, trying not to remove the skin. <laughs> Actually, if you have a good pair of thinning shears, you should be able, and you hold your shears lightly as you uh -huh, should, right. you should immediately be able to feel whether you've got skin, skin or hair. Yeah. And you really shouldn't cut them because you can feel when you're chomping down. And then I edge the front stop, side. Stop, stop. And remember, this flap turns here, so if you hold it like this, it's laying out flat, so you'll mm -hmm. get the hair off there. I mean, I'm sure you know that, but not everybody knows it. Stop. Yeah, they hate this. They don't like the sound of the scissors. It squeaks. Uh, differently than, you know, I can't hear it, but they can. Then what you do is you graduate from the length down here up to the top. To the top. You want it longer up here so that when I stand the whole head out, I want to see a ball. Okay. Or sort of like a ball. You'll see a little shape to the ear. Whiskers are never the most popular things to do. And with new fees, you know, some people don't like to take them off, and if you want to do that in the classes, that's okay. But if it comes to specials time, get rid of them. Your muzzle looks broader when you remove the whiskers. See, it's a thing with hair. It's all an optical illusion. And when you can Stay. You see this hair is wispy, mm -hmm. and I can look down into it. And when I can, I say, okay, the head's down in there somewhere. Right. But if I have a solid piece like this, I say, oh, the head's there. Mm -hmm. So this is the whole thing, you're taking the tips off so it's solid. Removing the halo. Yes, yeah, stand up here. And anything that sticks off, is I, oh, as I said, you just have to kind of go around and look at it. And, and hope she'll flip her ears up for you and see what happens when she does that. Ears and feet grow faster than anything else. Oh, what I is know. This? Does this have any spray or anything? Hell no. Doesn't that feel good? A tiny bit. Oh, it does? What? Well, the finishing spray. Oh, is that it? No That's hairspray? It. No hairspray. Wow. Nice. No, there's nothing on here, but yeah. wow. The shampoo, the conditioner, yeah. and the finishing spray. Just a tiny little bit of conditioner, yeah. but it, it worked. It didn't pull any hair out? No. I can't believe it. That's no, it didn't. Excellent.